So let's get started talking about trading the trends. Now, trend following is perhaps one of the most popular long-term strategies in the financial markets. But in order to trade the trends, we have to understand what makes a good trend. Because trends are created by powerful underlying economic factors, which may not be clear to all of those at all times. Now, my belief, and this is my personal belief, that the financial markets, no matter what you're trading, how you're trading, are completely random. They're made up of millions of human beings all doing their own thing, whether you're a hedge fund, whether you're a central banker, whether you're a, you know, an investment banker, whether you're an account manager, whether you're trading Forex and CFD format, or whether you're trading you know, millions of dollars at a time. We all make up this whole market. Now, retail trading only makes up a small percentage of it, but the whole entire market is influenced by all of these different people and their different feelings. Imagine, you know, you, you're a trader for a bank. You trade millions and millions of dollars a day. And your specialty is, say, the euro, US dollar. Hypothetical case. Now, you've been watching the euro, US dollar all night long. You're getting ready to go to work. You figure you're going to open a position this morning because you figure it's going to go up. And you figure out what price you're going to open it for. And you know, it's, it's on your mind and you know exactly kind of what you're doing. You know, you're going to finalize everything when you get to the office. But you pull out the driveway and bing, 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 bing. In two seconds, you get rear-ended. You get out of the car. It's not such a bad thing. But you know what? Your new Mercedes is dinged. And now you're in a bad mood. You're going to drive to work. You're going to get there, but you're going to get there 15 minutes late because of this ding and this little accident. And you get into your office, and you're in this in a bad mood. And you're going to call your insurance company. And that trade you were going to do at 7 o'clock when you walked into your desk this morning gets forgotten about. Even if you're a professional, you're still a human being. Well, the fact is you didn't trade a million or $10 million worth of the euro. It has some unforeseeable effect on the market. You know, it's a little bit of nothing. But if you believe that the market is made up of all of these kind of people, all having different types of experiences, you have to say to yourself, price has to be random. Which is not some overall guiding factor. So how can I take random movements and make sense out of them? You know, I'm not going to Las Vegas and throwing chips on the roulette table as I'm walking through the casino, hoping that as I walk out the door, they're going to scream, you hit the jackpot. No. Now, there are certain times in which the market exhibits non-random behavior. What's non-random behavior in a market that's fully random? We know these as trends. Because the market's moving uptrends or downtrends. They're moving up or down, but they're not necessarily moving in trends. They can be moving sideways. In fact, markets mostly move sideways. They move in congestion. But there are certain times when we start to see a market exhibiting what we call higher highs and higher lows, or lower highs and lower lows, for an extended period of time, fitting a set of general rules that give us something that we can call a trend. When we have this trend movement of this continuous move of higher highs and higher lows, or lower highs and lower lows, we have the formation of an uptrend or a downtrend. Now, I haven't mentioned time frames, and I haven't mentioned trend lines. Being able to see a trend with your eyes and seeing a well-developed, because price can be here and move to here without ever actually trending. Price can go like this, like that, like this, like that, like this, and 
never actually offer a trend, even though it did move higher. But when we have higher highs and higher lows, we have a period of non-random movement. So this is the day that you didn't get a rear end. This is the day you didn't get stopped behind the bus. This is the day that the, the snowstorm didn't come and all the sun is shining and the traffic was nothing on the highway and the whole world is moving in a good direction. So once we see these non-random behaviors, we can then start to apply some type of analysis to the markets. Now, because we're traders, and in this case with, with, with Alvexo, we're trading CFDs. We're not in long-term investors. We're not even long-term swing investors. We're either position traders, swing traders, and I, I want to take the word day trader, but it's the best way to use it. But I don't like the word tra day trader. I call it short-term traders because day trading is a thing of the past that happened back in the 80s and 90s that you know everybody thought we were making or getting rich laying on the beach. Okay, But day trading is a very specific type of trading. When we're trading CFDs, most of us are short-term traders because fortunately a CFD can be kept open overnight you know, a day trader by the rules, and in fact, in the U.S., when you're a day trader, you used to have to have to specify it, and the broker would not keep any of your trades open during the night, and there were special criteria you had to reach. Today, you're a CFD trader. You can close your trade in an hour. You can close your trade in six hours. You can try to close your trade tomorrow. And because we're talking short-term trades, we're more talking about technical analysis than we are fundamental analysis because fundamental analysis, yes, can move the markets, can shake the markets. But just because all the numbers show us the U.S. economy is recovering doesn't mean the dollar is going to go up at this precise moment. Doesn't mean the dollar is going to go up today. Sure, if we were going to invest in dollars for a long term, we could see that the U.S. is doing well. And maybe we would like to move our million dollars in to, from gold over to dollars. Or maybe we saw inflation was coming, but it's not going to hit for six months now. So maybe we'd like to be in gold. But we're not. We're, we are short-term CFD traders, which means we don't really care if the market's going up or down. We want to find a place to enter the market and exit the market in which we can make a short-term profit. So we're not getting involved in all of that precise look at economics, nor are we getting into long-term charts looking at, well, gold has gone up over the last 11 years and gold has got it trending up. We only care that gold is down to 1680 today and we think it's going to go to hit 1700 later today. We're going to close our trade out. We don't care that by next year, gold's going to be trading at $2,000. Now, the question is, how first do we determine the existence of a trend? Well, there's many technical tools that can help signal the phenomena. And there are an equal number of false signals generated by them. Remember, there are only three kinds of trends that can exist, flat, up, or down. Now, when I'm doing trend analysis and I'm doing looking to do trend trading, or I'm looking to enter a trade using a trend trading strategy, what I'm looking for, and the only thing I will accept, is a completely well-developed trend that is continually making higher highs and higher lows, or lower lows and lower highs. So the trend that we seek is to trade is different from random fluctuations. It's range patterns and similar price movements in that price itself in the absence of any technical indicator can still be recognized as showing a trend. So here we can see on an everyday chart, higher highs, lower highs, lower lows, lower highs, lower lows, lower highs, lower lows, lower highs. Now, 
trend trading is not based on a trend line because even though we're making higher highs and higher lows, we could have had a price that broke, you know, a, a, you know, a, a higher low that broke the trend because in trend trading, we're primarily looking at the opens and the closes of the candle and not the wicks. But a well-developed, good, honest trend is obvious. We should be able to see it with our eye. So if the trend can be identified visually, then why use technical tools? Well, even though we can notice the existence of a trend, we still need some technical tools to figure out how to trade it and how to time it. So trending markets tend to make strong moves in the direction of a trend followed by periods of consolidation or counter trend retraces before the next leg of the trend. We can call them cycles, we can call them waves, we can pull them, call them push cities. A well designed will have a push, an ease, a push, an ease, a push, an ease, and push. There's all types of explanations. The first wave or the first push will be up this high. The second will be the high, you know, the biggest run. The third will be that one. Only thing I'm concerned with, higher high, higher low. Higher high, higher low. Like I said, there's all types of gurus out there with very specific methodology in which to trade. But typically what happens to too many traders is they want to make some money during the period of strong directional trend movement, but they then they continue to trade as the market takes a breather from the trend and consolidates. It's these periods when traders give up all of the gains that they just made when the market was moving aggressively. Well, I'll just let me get my markers off here. So here we can see an uptrending market, which consists of strong upward movements followed by periods of consolidation and shallow retracements. Fact is, we will never ever be able to pick this top. I will never, ever, ever be able to pick this bottom. We call it catching a falling knife. It's virtually impossible. You'll just bloody yourself up. So you need to learn to identify the different parts of a trend. This will help you avoid overtrading during the choppy consolidation periods and will give you a better chance of profiting when the trend makes a strong move. Now, Keep in mind, there's all kinds of spurts. We can see that a trending market tends to move in spurts. Pushes, and I call them all the time, pushes and eases. Market pushes up, eases down. Pushes up, eases down. Now, if you, think, if you always think in mind, that, or keep in mind, that when the market starts moving up, it takes, well, and it's a mirrored image for, for downtrends. But in order for our market to start moving up, it takes a lot, a lot of work. It takes a lot of traders entering the market and it's continuous work. So imagine it's a hamster in a cage. When he gets in that little round thing that he starts spinning around, it takes him a lot of work to get that wheel moving forward. But once that wheel is moving, it becomes really unstoppable. So at some point, that hamster gets tired. He's not done for the day, that hamster can run forever. But he's, uh, you know, he, he, his little feet get a little bit tired. Well, in this case, what happens is many of the buyers who have been pushing the market say, ah, the price has gotten too high and they move to the sideline. Also, the new buyers say, ah, the price is too high and they move to the sideline. Buyers who bought down here say, ah, I'm gonna take my profit, I made my target and they leave the market. And so what happens is the market starts easing back down. But at some price point, these guys are gonna flip around and start entering. They're gonna say, ah, that's a good price because we know it's gonna push back up to here. So therefore I'm gonna start buying. And that momentum is that hamster running in that cage again. But there were always we, the wheel turning. The wheel slowed down a little bit, but it didn't turn around backwards. 
<clears throat> and these are the spurts, the pushes and eases. But we have to rec be able to recognize them, and we have to also be able to recognize when they are running out of momentum or whether, when they're going to reverse. Because not only do we need to know when to enter the market, we need to know when to get out of the market. Because remember, entering a trade is easy. You can enter and buy anytime you want on anything. But you're actually not in the game until you've actually bought something, until you actually have a trade in action. Now it's the work. How do I protect my profit? How do I minimize my risk? How do I know when to exit the market? That's the work of it all. Now, these retraces. Are when we have the highest potential of the high probability entry within a trend. If we've defined a trend, we can see that it's making higher highs and higher lows. So we know we have a good movement here. We want to enter on a retrace, but we're never going to be able to figure this exact point. So how do we know when we want to enter? Well, the easiest way is wait to wait for it to bounce off a bottom and start moving back in the direction of the trend. So, you know, there's all types of ways to evaluate a, reach, a retrace or a continuation. You know, we have Fibonacci sequences. My favorite is support and resistance. I look for price coming down and either stopping at my resistance level or falling through to the next resistance level. And when I see a bounce off of resistance level heading towards the next support level, okay, I might consider entering at that point. Now, there's many candlesticks that we can use. There's candlestick patterns we can use. We can look for engulfing candles. We can look for indecision candles. But the important part comes down to market timing. Market timing never works when one is trying to predict reversal points on a technical basis. However, market timing in the context of a trend with the purpose of picking the counter trend extremes and using them to enter a trade is necessary and profitable. And there lies the main principle of trend following strategy, recognizing a trend, identifying the counter trend moves and use them to enter in the direction of the trend. Now, some, some technical analysis tools are more widely used and more dependable than others. One of those being MACD. You know, MACD will help us see when a trend is overbought or oversold. It'll help us see when a trend is ending. It will help us see, um, it'll help it'll do everything but give us an entry point. So, but there are many indicators that we can use. MACD is just one of my favorites. Because ultimately we have to figure out what, where we're going to enter, where we would enter that trade. And that is and that is ultimately what you have to decide. So as you can see in here, in a nice, well-defined trade, there's many different ways and different points in which we can enter this trade. So once we've, once we've decided we have a nice, well-developed trend and non-random movement, we can then combine it with other indicators to figure an entry point, a price at which we will enter. We also have to be able to set up our stop losses and our take profit points. 
So this partly turns on the term and the nature of your trend following method. A stop loss order can be placed a short distance above or below the trend line, whether it is provided by a moving average or a simple line drawn on our charts. In our opinion, the trend followers should not realize his profits until he has a good reason to do so. And this is why I said, you're not in the game until you've actually made the trade. Okay. Always, always, always set a stop loss. Okay. You can always set a, a, a target point. You need to do your target points to figure out your risk management. But the hardest part is now protecting your profits and keeping your trade alive while that trend is still healthy. And being able to see that you you're in a retracement and not a reversal. And we can do that by moving from a flat stop loss as soon as we've moved into profits to a trailing stop loss. Okay. And we also want to continue moving our targets up because if you set your target, say, 50 pips, and the price has moved off 40 pips, there's a chance it could jump that 50 pips. But you know what? If you're safe and you got your profit locked in, why aren't you moving your target also so the computer doesn't close out your trade at a profit but before the trend is over? So this trading method involves a risk management component that uses three elements. Okay. The number shares the contract. You know, you have to determine what you can afford per trade. This is up to you. The current market price and the current market volatility. Because I have my own method. I will take a trade when I'm following the trend and move up my stop losses as I move into profit. And then when I've moved up so many points, I'll sell off half of my trade, move my stop loss up. When I've moved up another percentage of profit, I'll sell off another 25% of my trade and then let that last 25% run all the way. But this is my move. But one of the first rules of trend following is that price is the main concern. Traders may use other indicators showing where price may go next or what it should be, but the general rule of these should be disregarded. A trader needs only to be worried about what the market is doing, not what the market might do. Okay. So in other words, you wanna see, yes, I have a well-defined trend. What pricing am I going to enter? You don't need to keep predicting what's gonna happen later today or tomorrow. You just need to stay in the now. Always money management. Money management and risk management are critically important on every single trade. Control your risk. Understand that if a trend reverses, a trend can reverse for any reason, any time. Get out of the markets. Don't try to generate. If it has stopped moving in a non-random fashion and you can't figure out what it's doing, get out of the market quickly. Don't hope it's going to move back to that uptrend. Trend following should be systematic. Price and time are pivotal at all times. This technique is not based on the analysis of fundamental supply and demand factors. There's an old saying that goes, the trend is your friend until it isn't. So a trend line can help you along the way because breaking a trend line might be a warning that because a trend line is based on your swing highs or your swing lows. And may, might help you see that the trend is ending. But keep in mind, own your trade. Keep it simple. Get it done. Don't overcomplicate it. Don't spend days and hours trying to figure it out. When you can see non-random movement that fits higher highs and higher lows, you have a potentially high profitable trade. Enter the market. Set your stop loss or enter, you know, before you enter the market, figure out your risk management, set your stop loss, set your target. Now, enter the game. You're in that game. Now you start doing the work. You know, until that quarterback snaps off that first, I mean, until the kicker kicks off that first kick, the game hasn't started. Once that game started, that's where the work is. Staying in it for as long as possible, getting out at the right time, protecting your loss, protecting your risk, and protecting your profits. So thank you very much for joining us tonight. I hope I gave you some idea about trend following and how to spot a well-developed trend and how to make these well-developed trends part of your high probability trading strategy. If you have any questions, go to www.elvexo or you can go over now and set up a demo account or just register and somebody would be glad to answer all your questions and help you out. 
Thank you very much for joining us tonight, and we'll talk to you again real soon. Bye now.